Um, so good morning, everyone. I'm Will. And together with Paul, we're going to present our current work on um, the network automation architecture and network testing. Um, for those who are into your buzzwords, you could probably put this content down as net DevOps. And I should say that this is an ongoing project. So feedback ideas are, are very much welcome at this stage. And hopefully there'll be some time left for questions at the end. And anything big, we can try and set up a, a separate call outside of the plenary floor. Um, so first off, I'll go over some of the challenges that um, network automation is up against. Then I'll go into why this is something Paul and myself are looking into. And the core of this presentation is then split into two parts. The first being a, gen um, a general concept of the automation architecture and overview of that. And the second being specific to network testing. Um, the form of those may weave nicely into other parts of the NDCDI project too. And as we are sitting around the design phase of this right now, we do have a little proof of concept, which is live and you know, it's going to be hopefully functional at the end of this presentation. So what actually motivates this work? Um, if you're going to automate something, you want to be pretty confident that the processing system will scrutinize the input as much as you would um, or more before it completes the pipeline. Um, in a network, that might mean that it should be able to catch any errors in something like a switch configuration before it has a chance to kill connectivity to a portion of a network. So in looking to automate, we naturally fall into looking at network testing problems and how recent and coming changes to networks will further hinder the current approach for network testing. Speaking of that current approach, um, there isn't necessarily a, a standard approach to testing a network function right now. Um, it can often consist of teams who have um, physical access to a switch that might be in their office. They can apply a configuration to it, um, run it against a series of tests and see if it exhibits the expected behavior. Um, methods like this are relatively common. Um, slight tweaks here and there, say firewalls, that sort of thing. And um, there's generally not too much variability on that. Um, but as we further increase um, network heterogeneity, we introduce more complex errors as physical and software network devices um, more frequently interact in the production network. But testing those interactions is um, relatively complex. And also as we break down software-based network functions into smaller units, which we can dub micro VNFs, network infrastructure faces more of these challenges seen by cloud software providers as microservices gained more popularity in the software domain. Um, such as handling the increased rate of updates, both in terms of the number of different services being updated and the frequency of the more specialized smaller units being updated. So given all these challenges, how can we give the developer more autonomy without causing more risk and instability within the network? Uh, but beyond those points, this project is also looking into intent-based networking, um, and this introduces new testing problems as well. Um, for example, if an intent was to say, update a router, say update a router, um, that would just happen and the intent could then determine if it's been satisfied or not. But if you say an intent was to define a set amount of bandwidth guarantee between two hosts in a network, this must be continuously verified in order to check the intent state. And if a configuration update um, created by a developer would impact the network's ability to satisfy the currently defined intents, this is something any automation pipeline should be able to check in um, an intent-based network infrastructure. So who are um, Paul and myself and um, why are we researching this? As mentioned, um, I'm Will. Um, so many of you might have seen my previous unikernel focused presentations, um, but in short, I look at how we can integrate micro VNFs such as unikernel and container-based VNFs into network infrastructure, focusing primarily on how we can extract the required telemetry from black box micro VNFs and how we can best manage the vastly increased number of deployed units that would make up that infrastructure. And as stated before, more micro micro VNFs can actually cause issues when automating. So in order to increase the viability of the unikernel VNF form, more developer autonomy will be required. And um, but for from my research, you can see the video from my NGCDI forum call, which should be on the NGCDI YouTube channel. So Paul. Hi, I'm Paul. Um, I've just started as a PhD student earlier this month. Um, originally, I joined the project as an intern RA in October, working in the realm of Net DevOps with Will on this tool um, for VNF testing we're going to demonstrate. Once this project is realized, I'll be shifting my focus more towards the intent-based networking side with an emphasis on intents in the use case of multi-domain deployments and collaborating with the networking group on the intent manager platform. Um, so automation architecture, um, I'll move on to this is a, the general overview part of this. Um, um, some of you might have seen content on this before as it's a theme that can motivate and cover a lot of different sub projects. Um, this slant on the architecture will focus on the process of updating or reconfiguring functions within the network. So for those who haven't seen any content on this um, yet, the general goal of this automation architecture slant is to reduce the human input required to make changes to the network. 
Um, obviously, this in itself is no new idea as microservices became more a common approach for building and deploying cloud software. That domain sees the opportunity for more automation, resulting in the rise of the term DevOps, a term that symbolizes the increased collaboration between the developers and the operators. And when implemented, this can bring about faster rollout times of fixes and updates due to increased automation, but also help target issues faster as developers have access to more relevant and contextual data from the operator regarding their deployed service. And as networks grow more into the software domain, it's worth being more considerate of developers whilst being mindful of the risks that would be involved with developer to network automated deployment. Um, overall, the goal is to give network function developers an increased level of autonomy. And to do this, we must ensure that the network functions are adequately tested for the infrastructure they'll be deployed on. And as the tests, um, as, as those tests actually can't come from the developer because they don't have the insight to be able to determine what the real network might look like, these tests should instead come from the operator who should have a better global view of the network and must be able to create a good suite of tests for developers to run their different types of network functions against. Um, this slide shows a, a vague diagram of what a somewhat automated workflow might look like today. Um, here the developer you can see is pushing some source code changes for a VNF to a remote Git repository, um, where we might see some typical CI CD workflow. And this falls into some of the questions asked during Harris's IA7 talk a second ago, um, where we see these automated unit tests taking place. These don't have to change that much. So given unit tests are more just like each function, this bit of code, if we give it um, X and Y as a parameter, do we get out Z? That's a relatively simple test and that can remain the same process it is now. But more frequently, VNFs having to interact with more of the network. So it's not necessarily about how the, the code functions as a sole unit, but how the code functions when it's deployed alongside thousands of other um, VNFs and potentially different vendors. Um, so they could then run these more advanced checks, which might be that uh, I've got a physical switch in the office. Let's put some code on it and see if we um, see expected behavior from this switch. And if not, then roll back. And if you do, you can then build the, the final executable, which could be a, um, some form of deployable unit, like a VM image or a binary. Developer can get that back. They can pass that to the operator somehow, either by a tool set the operator exposes, such as a web or API tool, or just give it to the developer in some way they can deploy it to the production network, gather metrics on it, and expose some of those metrics back to the developer if, if they so choose. Um, but we can definitely do better. Um, first of all, um, we can have the developer and operator actually working together. So these two different sides of this cycle should be cooperating, not just passing occasional bits of data between one another. Um, the operator here could define a set of tests that a VNF or configuration change must pass before being deployed. And the operator um, um, can define like the, the pass fail conditions for that set of tests as well. And as the developer can keep their traditional CI CD style workflow going, that can remain in this pipeline. However, um, eventually this developer and operator side, they can come together and this suite of tests defined by the operator can um, determine if the code changes by the developer will still continue to work and therefore can continue along on this pipeline. Um, the, the tests could be something like a network policy that mimics the production network um, that the new changes could be added to alongside a set of these pass-fail conditions. Um, but the, more importantly, the developer should be informed of some context as to what causes any errors. And um, should the test pass, they can then continue to be rolled out to this production network. Um, sp um, speaking of um, the sandbox testing phase uh, from this slide, um, actually, although it can mimic the real network, it can't necessarily show um, performance metrics in the real network because it is just an emulation environment, like Harris was mentioning in the in the previous presentation. So we can't actually collect product, um, um, performance metrics, but only critical error metrics. So to compensate for that, if we introduce a more staggered rollout as part of this automated pipeline, we can have a chance to monitor and try and detect performance related metrics um, from the configuration changes. And if those performance related metrics don't quite suit the, the tests defined by the operator, a rollback can again take place. And then collecting these metrics is, um, is vital as well. But another thing we can think about when looking at this architecture is a separation between network service telemetry and network function telemetry. I know that the diagram's getting quite busy with arrows right now. Um, but the key things to look at are um, the, the, the network telemetry separation. Um, so to an operator, the service telemetry might be more important, being able to see that um, the 
the network as a whole is operating as expected. Yet to the developer, they don't need to necessarily know that because as, as we um, start to split up VNF into smaller and smaller units, we get more and more specialization. So the teams that are developing it care more about their VNF. Um, but the TLDR is that we can test um, changes in a sandbox and to catch critical errors before change ever propagates to, to production network. And via a staggered rollout and targeted monitoring, we can catch performance related issues quickly and roll back if required. And looking at how this interacts more of the NGCDI vision too, this targeted monitoring can also inform an operator if a change to a network would impact the currently standing intent, such as a bandwidth guarantee through something such as an intent manager, but that's a you know, spoiler for future presentations, I think that one. Um, so the term net DevOps that I mentioned at the start, that buzzword, um, is this it? And the answer is, well, sort of. It is, there isn't necessarily a single strict definition. Um, it does encourage communication and more importantly, collaboration between developers and operators using the knowledge from the operator and the, the changes that be produced by the developer. Um, and this allows us to um, introduce more robust testing and management management mechanisms and enable automation. And developers can also then better target their changes with the more contextual feedback from the testing phase. And this will allow them to bring better targeted changes at a faster pace. So it's at least a good place to start the discussion into net DevOps. But what do we actually need to make this a reality? Um, we'll need consistent network function telemetry mechanisms. So any type of VNF we deploy, we'll need to be able to make sure we can extract data from that. And we need to be able to ensure we can produce that split of service telemetry and function telemetry. Um, the operator would have to have some form of API or system that would allow for a staggered rollout. Um, we would need um, to have some way of defining categories of VNF so we can apply varying types of tests against them. Um, we need digital counterparts to hardware-based network functions to be sure that in this emulation environment, we can test against parts of the network, which in the real network are physical hardware components, but in the emulation environment, we don't have access to that. So we would need some form of digital counterpart, such as a VM that mimics the function of that hardware function. And very importantly, we need some form of environment to perform that sandbox testing phasing, because that currently doesn't really exist. Um, but I'll hand over to Paul now, who will go into more on that. So thank you, Will. Um, our sandbox testing tool. Uh, our vision for the sandbox testing suite is to be able to run virtual network functions in a very customizable environment uh, where it can be tested prior to rolling it out onto a live network. Um, the driver for the testing suite is to combine automated testing with support for various technologies like containers, virtual machines, um, and therefore unikernels and uh, Essentially, we don't need to know much about um, a certain um, technology before we run it in this environment. Um, that means it can be very flexible to the needs of the users. Um, uh, as, as Will has mentioned, we're borrowing some concepts from traditional DevOps in software engineering to drive our model. Uh, it's also worth noting that um, saying VNF testing here can also include configuration changes for hardware-based network functions uh, in the form of digital twins, as Will has mentioned. Um, once we have our um, VNF inside the sandbox, uh, we using a virtual topology of emulated network devices so that the testing can occur in a representative network environment. So we have a testing scenario that's actually relevant to a real use case. Um, operators are going to have the ability to model their own virtual topologies or if desired mirror their live network so that the results of the tests can be directly applicable. Um, and this also applies to testing. Uh, operators can define their own requirements for how a VNF should be tested against the pass-fail criteria. Um, so let's have a look at the overview. The testing suite consists of two main elements, firstly being the Libver API, which provides the functionality for running virtual devices, which is represented by the green box. Um, and secondly, Mininet, which is everything to the right of it, um, which drives the network testing topology. So much like in traditional DevOps, developers can push their code to a repository, <clears throat> which will automatically build the code, deploy into our sandbox environment, flesh out a testing topology as defined by the operator and be subjected to these pass-fail tests. Um, by using the Libva API, we're able to provide hardware virtualization for our VNF, uh, which is very important as VNS can come in various forms, um, can have diff different requirements for deployment, either being run on a, a system with a Linux kernel, being deployed as a standalone virtual image, as there are no S, Unicurl, et cetera. Um, attaching that to Mininet means our custom network topology can be completely defined by the operator so that um, 
not only is it, is it used for testing, but also the developer doesn't necessarily need to have that much visibility into the state of their network um, or a, a, a grand uh, overall picture. Um, and another quick point to mention is we can make use of a variety of devices in this topology as well. We aren't lim limited to simple mini-net hosts or one central VNF. We can include VNFs in various places, the same VNF, different VNFs, et cetera. Um, linking back to Will's section regarding the separation of cooperating roles, uh, and really driving that cooperation, you can see there's a clear distinction here between what elements of the system each role interacts with. So again, the developer being responsible for only that section in green, um, the VNF that we're trying to test, uh, and um, the operator being responsible for that topology of testing. Um, so thanks, Paul. Um, just before we move on to the proof of concept I mentioned earlier, um, and some hopefully maybe some questions, I just want to make a few notes that might be useful to those doing developer work on NDCDI. So this is relatively unrelated to um, a lot of this presentation. Um, first off, uh, the work relating to this specific project is open source. So if anyone has used for a mini net fork that allows for libvirt based nodes and provides a REST API, then that's now there for you. And Hopefully I won't regret saying this, but if anyone does want to use it, there could be a limited amount of technical support um, available as well. Um, but yeah, so that's there along with a Prometheus exporter for Mininet, which is um, also open source. Um, so speaking of open source though, we've also set up a slightly more official NGCDI GitHub organization. If you want right access to that, just ask, ask me via email. And we also now have a technical wiki that's in its very early stages that you can contribute to via the wiki repository on the GitHub organization. And it's very much in need of contributions from the other partners, so that would be great if you could do that. And the links for these are at the bottom of the slide, but you might have to see that later in the video because I didn't think this through, apparently. Um, so yeah, the actual proof of concept. Um, so far we have started work on the sandbox testing phase of, of this, and we do have a quick proof of concept I hopefully can, can show. And we're hoping to evolve that more into a demo in the current weeks, and we can always catch up more on it in a forum call later down the line. Um, to throw back to earlier, the sandbox testing phase is this, um, the first stage that brings the operator and the developer's test resources together, and it performs some checks against the changes the developers provided against the tests that have been provided by the operator. So as a proof of, as this is a proof of concept, we've kept things somewhat simple, attempting to replicate that basic testing strategy I mentioned earlier. This is to put a configuration onto a, onto a switch that the developer might have physical access to, um, run a series of tests against it, and, and determine if it exhibits the expected behavior. Um, we do have a want to make this more open to automation and to also to make it a little bit more interesting. Rather than test a configuration on a normal switch, this proof of concept will actually test a unikernel based switch, specifically a ClickOS based Ethernet switch. But if you've seen any of our presentations before, you might know what that is. But basically, it's a virtual machine based micro VNF. Um, so in this case, um, you, we would expect an operator normally to provide um, a topology that could somewhat mimic the real network. Um, and the topology being a definition of a virtual network. But as this is just a proof of concept, this is a um, four host topology. So I think these are like four regular computers, two switches, which are just Linux bridges, and a gap in this topology, which we've left open for our unikernel based switch, which would connect these two halves of this network. So this H1 here wouldn't be able to talk to H4 should the or should the, um, the unikernel um, not function as a switch. And also expected to be provided by the operator is this set of tests, which is a, a list of um, criteria um, that should be um, checked against in the simulation environment to determine if this unikernel is providing adequate functionality. Um, so also in this, we've got, you can see the constraints here. So we're putting some constraints like we want to do H1 ping H3 to determine connectivity across here. Um, and we want to make sure we don't lose any packets and we want to make sure the, um, the ping round trip time is under um, a tenth of a millisecond. Um, but I'll pop on over to the stuff that might very easily break. Hopefully this is all coming through, through fine still. Um, so the first thing we've got here in the top right hand corner, um, sorry for the format, it's a lot of code. So if you're not too comfortable with that, I do apologize. But basically this is a topology file. So this uses Mininet, as Harris mentioned again earlier, this is a really common network emulation tool. And a lot of that topology I mentioned earlier is just created using normal Mininet features, such as add host, add switch. And um, these are just network namespaces. These are just Linux bridges, nothing overly complex going on here, nothing new. But where it starts to get interesting and um, use our changes is further down in the topology file. 
where we're leaving this virtual node here. This isn't a feature which is in Mininet usually, this is something we've added in. And we're basically wanting to create a virtual machine and add it into that in, into the topology. So that's going to be um, this unikernel instance, hopefully. So when we're going to say make a virtual machine using the libvirt API based on the switch.xml file, which is this file underneath here. And the other interesting part of this topology is this REST API, which what this would allow us to do is send commands to varying parts of this virtual topology, this virtual network, and extract live um, telemetry data from it. Um, so yeah, this um, switch.xml file is really simple. It's basically saying, here's a binary image for a unikernel, which is a ClickOS instance. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's a really simple libvirt file. If you're familiar with libvirt, you probably know it's very short compared to most. Um, but this is just a ClickOS VM. It doesn't really do anything. And to actually make it into a Ethernet switch so we can actually see if we can communicate between the two hostages network, um, we're going to apply this configuration called switch.click, um, which is a really simple click configuration for a two-port Ethernet switch. Um, so yeah, give, give a go at that, getting that instantiated. So now those will be provided by the operator and the, the actual switch configuration provided by the developer. I'll instantiate that topology, and hopefully that will all go fine. Um, and just to bring your attention to it as well, in the bottom left-hand corner of this, if it's at all visible over Teams, is um, a list of the virtual machines which are currently instantiated on this system. And you can see that it, this um, topology is created this click zero VM. And you can might be able to see from this file, this VM as part of this network is designed to be called click zero. So we've now got a topology which has this unicorn instance as part of it. So the next thing I want to do is at the apply the, um, the configuration which could be provided by the developer. In this case, this Ethernet switch configuration. So I'm just going to quickly do that now. There we go. We've got confirmation that that's been installed. And if you were paying very close attention, you might be able to see that this state switch from B to R in click zero. So from a block state to a running state. So now it's running this Ethernet switch. And then we can actually get on to testing because now this is the whole environment set up. So finally, we can then see this tests.yaml file, which is something the operator should be determining. So we here saying basically look at this certain mini net target, which isn't too prudent to this at all. And we've got these two things though, these this ping all tests where we're saying send pings around the network and see what gets placed. So we can just get a loose idea of network connectivity. And then we want to do these three very specific tests. This first one's a baseline where we ping in from H1 to H2. Um, this topology, as you can see, actually won't need to use the unikernel to have communication between H1 and H2. So it's just a baseline test. And we're adding two constraints to that. We're saying don't lose any packets. If you lose any packets, the test should fail. And if the max, um, if the average round trip time at any point goes above 0 0.1, the test should also fail. But then we're doing two tests which do have to send traffic across the unikernel itself. Um, so H1 to H3 and H2 to H4. And the first of these tests, the H1 to H3 test, we're saying it can't lose any packets and also the max RT round trip time can never exceed one, which is a very high value. It should definitely not exceed that really. And on the other side of it, we've got one which says 0 0.2. It's otherwise the same apart from it's H2 to H4, but it says the, the round trip time can no, at no point exceed 0 0.2, which is about how much we would expect it to take normally. So it might oscillate around that, hopefully, if the demo, if the demo proof of concept goes as expected. But I'll instantiate those tests. Um, this might take a second. So all this is Dockerized and everything, so it's relatively easy to reproduce. And I'll give all the the web-based dashboards a moment to instantiate. Oh, right, you might be able to see it's now performing tests against the network. If you can pass the terminal output tool, and this is where the proof of concept goes wrong. Oh no, that's surprising. Nice. Okay, so this is the um, the dashboard we can now get from this live data coming out of this network. So we can see this is the round trip time for all those pings on the ping all, and these are the three tests that we defined. So we have this baseline test here, this, which happens to be in the middle, H1 to H2, and this is currently in a passing state. And um, there's a passing state on H2 to H4, well there was, but now the round trip time just exceeded a certain value, and that goes into a fail state. And we can see the, the one which we defined as quite an easy test, um, which was the H1 to H3, is also in a passing state. I am sorry, these keep on darting around and don't remain in the same order. And here we can just see that the, there is full connectivity. No packets are being lost, regardless of round trip time within the network. Um, so, but that's basically what we've got as a proof of concept right now. There are a few things we're in the process of adding to, um, which is rather than just having ping tests, you also want to be able to do iperf tests so we can test if a given change to a 
a network function would determine or it would have a, an impact on the bandwidth between given nodes and a network. And also we're hoping to be able to instantiate different types of virtual network function. Using SDN based network functions should be relatively simple because that's um, functionality already provided by the normal form of Mininet. So we can already do that alongside unikernel based VNFs. Um, and the next goal are to is to have um, um, user space virtual network functions as well. And then potentially have more bespoke virtual machines being built as well. But I think that just about um, covers the proof of concept. So it is a work in progress. If you have any thoughts or ideas of where we where you think we should go with it, it'd be really good to hear those. And um, yeah, I think that's everything. And just to, I know we're running a bit short on time, so I'll just skip straight to the questions. Thank you.